Okay, so today I'm going to talk about timelines, all right? Um, apt and quite timely given that this is episode number 41. Oh, I'm going to sigh a big fucking sigh of relief when I finish this podcast tomorrow. But anyway, I want to talk to you about timelines. Now, timelines are tricky because I've spoken before about, you know, billions of years and light years and different things that we've no fucking handle on. We, we, don't, we, don't have, we don't have a grasp on it. We don't deal in millions and billions. So we don't know what a million years ago even fucking is. We have some conceptualization of it, but not much. Okay, so I could say to you that we landed on the moon in 1969, but for most of us, like for me, and this is actually an interesting one, I must do a, a podcast on this, on how people figure shit out. So how long ago was 1969? Just ask yourself there, but even fucking pause it and just think and work it out. Take the fucking two seconds or 20 minutes or whatever length of time it takes you to figure out when was 1969. Now, the way I do it would be 1969 is essentially the same as 1970. 1970 was 30 years away from 2000. It's now 2020, okay, which is 20 years the far side of 2000. So 1970 to 2000 is 30 on one side, and then on the other side, 2000 to 20, or sorry, to 2020 is 20. So that's 30 plus 20 equals 50, plus the one I added to 169 to make 70. So there's 30 plus 20 is 50 plus one. So the moon landings was 51 years ago. That's personally how I would have worked it out. And it's interesting to see how other people would have worked it out. Like if you've got a high enough IQ and you're, you have a fucking affinity for maths, say, you might just go, well, 2020 minus 1,969 is 51. That might have been the way you got to it. God knows. Who cares? But anyway, as I said, that's for a later date. Most likely not tomorrow. So season number three. Fuck, have I mentioned season number three before? It doesn't exist yet, but it will. Anyway, I digress. I could tell you that the moon landing was 51 years ago. I could tell you that the moon landing was in 1961. Same fucking thing. But it's hard. Like, what, what does that mean? It means fuck all. And this, what I'm about to tell you, is not going to mean a whole pile either, but it's interesting as fuck. 1969 was 66 years after the Wright Blood Brothers took their first flight. For those of you that don't know, flying was invented by two brothers called the Wright Brothers, W-R-I-T-E, and that was 66 years before the moon landings. So it was in 1903, two lads hopped in a plane, flew, you know, 100 feet or whatever the fucking distance was. Not far, but still fucking far enough, a proper, legit flight. Now, before this, we would have had hot air balloons, I'm sure, but hot air balloons are a bit shit. Like in in the grand scheme of things, they're 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 a bit shit. They're cool, but they're a bit shit. Okay, my understanding of hot air balloons, although not extensive, is that you can't steer the fucking things. Okay, so you get a big sack, you pump it full of fucking hot air, and up she goes. Okay, now there's a lid essentially at the top of it. So you, when you're in the basket that's hanging from the big sack of hot air, you can open the lid at the very top of it. You open the lid. The hot air rushes out and you'll fucking drop like a stone if you don't close it quick enough. Now, I'm sure it doesn't open the whole way and you don't just pull a lever and pshh, fucking terminal velocity, velocity and you hit the ground. I'm sure, you know, you pull it down gently, a little bit opens, you glide down ever so slightly. You want to go up, you pull the cord, you get the big blowtorch going pshh, and it fucking fills it full of hot air again and up she goes. But in order to steer it, here's one for you. My understanding is that you can't. My understanding that the way you at least try and direct a hot air balloon is by the wind. And the wind travels in different directions at different altitudes. So if you want to go left or west or east or whatever, fucking that way, you have to find out at what altitude is the air blowing that way. And if it's not, tough fucking shit, basically. Now, I'm sure there's a way... Around that, I'm sure you can go the opposite direction to find another wind. Look, I don't know. I do know that sail ships can do what's called tacking. So you'd be forgiven for thinking that a sail ship could only travel in the direction that the wind was blowing. But you can actually sail a ship directly into a headwind. You go diagonally. 
you're diagonally left, diagonally right, diagonally left, diagonally right. It's not ideal, lads, but you know, it's free energy, so at least you're not burning up fuel. And I think that's called tacking. But anyway, the fucking moon landings. We landed on the fucking moon, lads, 66 years after our very first flight. Our very first proper fucking flight. Think of the shit that's been invented in the last decade. What will it be doing in fucking 66 years' time? But anyway, I'm fucking five minutes in. Holy shit, I've made a few notes for this. This is one I've actually had a few seconds to sit down and I have the fucking clarity of knowing tomorrow was the last one. So I actually enjoyed a little bit of research for this. And timelines are interesting as shit as well. Speaking of timelines, you mightn't have ever heard of the Oregon Trail, okay? But you've probably seen it and I can probably give you a relatively good visualization of it. Do you remember the old fucking spaghetti westerns? The old western movies, Clint Eastwood was in a few and John Wayne was in a few more, that kind of era. And you would typically have what was called a caravan, I think, which was, you know, 5, 10, 15, 20 horse-drawn carriages. The, the carriages would have kind of had hoops around them, like a polytunnel nearly. They would have had hoops and then you would have pulled a tarpaulin across it. And there would have been wooden wheels, no suspension, no fucking anything. And you would have trundled along, kicking up a load of dust behind you. And it's basically how people in what we now call the United States of America traveled from the east of the country to the west of the country. Okay, it's when they headed west. The gold rush, all that jazz. Now, you might remember them. At night time, they used to circle their, their, their caravan. So their caravan was kind of like a train. You know the way a train is in a row? and it's all separated by carriages. Well, this is the same kind of thing, only they're not all attached. So you have horses pulling individ individual caravans in, um, oh, what's the fucking modern term? There's a word they use, fuck, give us two secs. Convoy, that's what it is, convoy. So they're traveling along a convoy, but at night what they used to do was they used to make a circle out of their convoy, okay? Now this served two purposes. One which was played up on big time, but not all that common back at the time, it was played up big time in the movies, was that it was to defend you against the Indians, okay? The Native Americans, as they're now known. But realistically, what it was better at was keeping your livestock, because people brought livestock on the, on the journey with them. They brought their fucking cattle, they brought their kids, they brought everything. It took fucking four or five months or so of trekking along to get from let's say the east coast to, to the west coast but anyway why the fuck are we talking about the oregon trail who gives a fuck the oregon trail was started out by fur trappers i think in the early 1800s it was from 18, 1811 i think is when it officially started to about 1840 okay that's when it was now again that timeline what's that fucking 200 years there thereabouts yeah it's probably about 200 years ago what the fuck has that got to do with anything not a whole pile, but I'll tell you what happened at the same time, which might blow your tiny little mind. Do you know it was invented in 1843? So right smack bang in the middle, when there was cunts heading from e the east of the United States to the west in the gold rush, okay? Heading west for new land and new fucking whatever and manifesting their destiny and coming up against engines and all that kind of jazz, shooting buffalo along the way. What was invented at the same time? The fucking fax machine, lads. The fax machine. Alexander Bain invented the fax machine in 1843 while everybody else in America was in the fucking Oregon Trail. Madness. Did you ever hear of fucking Cleopatra? The ancient fucking Egyptian chick, okay? She lived closer to now than she did the building of the pyramids in Giza. Okay? She was closer to having a Twitter account than being around when they built that fucking thing. Okay, here's another one for you. Do you remember Will Smith? Remember Fresh Prince of Bel-Air? Will Smith is older now than Uncle Phil was back then. What the fuck is wrong with the world? Here's one for you. Greenland sharks, okay? It's a particular type of shark that lives deep in the Atlantic Ocean. They live to be fucking 400 years old, lads. 400 years old. A fucking fish. But what's even more interesting than that is they're not sexually active until they're what age? hundred and fucking fifty. What the fuck? Greenland sharks live to be a 400 years old and aren't sexually active to 150. Fucking mental. Do you know what else is mental? All right, here's one for you. 9-11, okay, happened in 2001, okay? Members of the Taliban flew themselves into the trade towers and the rest is literally history, okay? That was 19 years ago. 
All right? Most of us hopefully will remember it. 19 years ago. Do you know it was only 12 years before it? And maybe this, maybe you just go, yeah, and. But this blew my fucking mind. So 9-11 was 19 years ago. The Berlin Wall came down in 1989, which was only 12 years before that. So there's 19 years between now and 9-11, but only 12 years between 9-11 and the Berlin fucking wall coming down. Fucking mental. Here's another one for you. Sliced bread was, invi- was invented in 1928. Okay? So my granddad-in-law, the wife's granddad, who's 96, is literally older than sliced bread. Now, in keeping with timelines, I want to talk about something that I haven't talked about before. I haven't talked about before, should I say. I have a huge interest in it. I'm fucking obsessed with the hunting things. And I don't think it's ever even came up. I don't think I've ever mentioned them. Dinosaurs, lads. Fucking dinosaurs. I can't get enough about dinosaurs. Do you know what the biggest dinosaur that ever lived was? It was this thing called Argentinosaurus, okay? The fucking thing was 100 tons. 100 tons. Now, again, like the measurements I've given before, and like billions of years and light years and all that kind of stuff, it's hard to get your head around. Like, what's 100 tons? I'll tell you what 100 tons in is. 100 tons is a Boeing 757, okay? A giant fucking airplane that was about 200 seats on it. Like an enormous aircraft. 100 tons. These things are fucking huge. Okay, do you know what else is about 100 tons? Actually, do you know what's bigger than 100 tons? The blue whale. Bigger than any dinosaur, bigger than anything that's ever lived. It's knocking about today in 2020. The blue fucking whale, lads, we know can live, or not, not can live, can grow up to 150 tons. Okay, so a fucking Boeing 757 and a half. Couple of fucking tidbits of information about the blue whale before I get back to dinosaurs. The tongue right a blue whale's tongue it weighs about the same as an elephant a blue whale's tongue weighs about the same as an elephant okay its heart is the size of a car and its fucking diet is four to eight tons of krill a day four to eight tons of krill a day fucking amazeballs here's another one for you this is cool, and this is, this is in relation to the conservation of energy, and it's fucking deadly. I've seen drone footage of a blue whale swimming along, minding its own business. And what a blue whale does to feed, like, like how the fuck does it get, you know, four to eight tons of krill? It doesn't go fucking picking them off one by one, that's for damn sure. No, it sees a cl- like a cloud of them. So it's looking ahead of itself, and it can see that the water is pink. And it's pink because it's so densely packed full of krill. It swims up to it, opens its enormous big mouth that it probably swallow your fucking house, never mind you, whole. And gulps in, you know, 10 tons of water and with the 4 to 8 tons of krill in it. And then filters out the water and there you go, you have your fucking, your meal. Alright? But interestingly, the cloudy patch, the pink cloudy patch of krill has to be of a certain size because if it's too small okay get on this conservation of energy if the if the cloud of krill is too small the big i'm sorry the blue whale won't open its mouth and swallow them it'll just keep its mouth closed and cruise straight fucking through them because when you when a blue whale opens its mouth when it's swimming along and it opens its mouth it's essentially pulling the brakes on Okay, it's like a, it's essentially the same way a parachute works, only it's out in front of the whale and not behind the whale. Okay, you open up that mouth and you lose all of your aquadynamics as opposed to aerodynamics. We, we run with aquadynamics. But you, you lo- it loses its streamlinedness. Okay, and it essentially puts the brakes on. So if the cloud of krill isn't big enough, let's say there's only half a ton of krill in it, the blue whale it doesn't know this it knows this instinctively if it opens up its mouth and slows itself down for a small meal if that meal is so small it doesn't give the whale the energy to get back up to the speed it was at it means that it will have lost calories in eating that meal 
fucking mental. I'm going to say that again because I don't know if I worded that particularly well. As the blue whale is swimming along, if it sees a huge big mouthful of krill, it'll open it up, which effectively puts the brakes on and slows it down, gulps in its couple of ton of krill, and away it goes. But put it this way, now just keep the, the maths basic. As it's swimming along and it just opens its mouth for the crack, that slows it down. In order for it to get back up to speed, it has to burn, I don't know, fucking 100,000 calories. I've no idea, but call 100,000, just a nice round figure. It needs 100,000, it will use 100,000 calories, flapping its big fucking tail, getting itself going again. If there's only 80,000 calories in the cloud of krill, then it's literally not worth its fucking time stopping. How fucking insane is that? Back to dinosaurs and back to timelines. See how I did that? You're familiar with the T-Rex? Big Tyrannosaurus motherfucker. You're probably familiar with the Stegosaurus as well. The Stegosaurus, just to remind you, was the dude with the big platelets sticking out of its back. All along its spine, it basically had these huge big platelets. And it had two spikes either side on the end of its tail. Like a, like a club only with spikes, basically. Like a baseball bat with nails sticking out of it, that kind of thing. And big plates all along its back. Most people are familiar with that. If you know what a fucking dinosaur is, odds are you know what a stegosaurus is. Here's one for you, okay? The T-Rex lived around 90 to 70 million years ago, okay? So just before the dinosaurs were wiped out by a big fucking meteor impact, 65 million years ago, T-Rex was knocking around, okay? That was 74 million years after stegosaurus was around. So there's literally more time between me recording this podcast and a T-Rex than there was from a T-Rex to a fucking Stegosaurus. And on that note, I'll chat you tomorrow for the final episode of the solo season two. Toodles. But before I let you go, I'd just like to remind everybody that this episode and all the episodes on YouTube have been brought to you by past guest and friend of the show, Pat McKeown. Pat is very similar to myself insofar as that he's long had an interest in the mind and more specifically the brain and how they both interact to such an extent that he went and spent four years getting a degree in neuroscience and then spent a further year in getting a master's in psychology. Now what he's done is pretty fucking cool. He's after setting up his own YouTube channel. It's called Pat Psychology Masters and there's a link in the description. Now what he's done here is he's uploaded all the best bits that he's learned over the last five years and put them into short, plain English, easy to understand YouTube videos for the likes of myself. His YouTube channel has been a massive resource for me in understanding both my mind and the mind of others. So hit up Pat Psychology Masters YouTube channel, subscribe, give it a like and a comment and a share, all that kind of stuff helps and I'll chat you soon.